היי. רגע, רגע. אהההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
in every class because I think that that type of class keeps you going as well as it keeps them going. Yeah. And yeah. So well, you know, we are all, uh, we tend to think a lot and especially actors because they are very complicated people and very uh, uh, people who feel a lot and think a lot and take their time to think a lot. And for uh, in acting, the more you think, the further you get from your character. Because what we want as actors, it's to connect emotionally with the character um, and uh, through your feelings. And the more you think about it, the more distance you, you take from the character. So the whole idea, and it was totally in intentional throughout the years that I developed a routine really of nonstop work in order not to fall into the intellectual part of it. The intellectual part we do around the table. Mm -hmm. We talk about it, uh, we uh, break down the script, try to understand what each situation is, what is the function of the character within the situation. That we do around the table. Once we are on our feet, I don't want them to think because we thought everything we need and now we need to experience it. So the idea of having speed and rigor is totally intentional. So once they are, so once they are emotionally packed into the character, uh, do they stay with the character when they, the exercise for that sake is over? Do they carry? The, uh, there are uh, different types of exercises. There are types of exercises that actually prepare the body to be able to express in any way that you might need for a character. And there are specific exercises when we work on a play okay. that would pertain directly to the character that we are working on. So you have first to do uh, what you call table reading before you do it? Do That's what we do when, when I direct. That's what every director does. Of course, yeah. You sit around the table and you talk about the play. And once you understand what the play is all about, you understand more or less what you want from the character, then you put it on the feet and start experimenting without thinking too much. So in the and, class, hmm? in, the, in the class, yeah. the exercises, uh, you don't have to first understand what you're doing in terms of uh, beats and breaking Absolutely down. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. The last thing I want them is to understand. I never talk before I get into the class. Oh. And we leave all the questions for the end of the course because they cannot know. When you ask questions that come from experience, you can digest them and internalize them much better. When you, there are questions because you want to know, it comes from knowledge, not from experience. Therefore, it's much more difficult to internalize it. Molly, when I think about the range of the actors that came out from your, under your wings, which is everybody that went to Juilliard, starting with Kevin Klein from the first year, Meryl Streep, Jessica Chestnut, Adam, Adam Driver. By the way, Meryl Streep, uh, I taught at Yale and directed her there, not at Julia. Oh, okay. She, oh, okay. No, right, I remember she was at Yale. But I'm right. thinking about all of them and each one is very different from each other. And in your class, you teach everybody together. Do you stick with each one to see how they implement what you say through their abilities and characters and their uh, um, the way they take the, the way they carry out the parts of their uh, work well that's a very good uh, question because the first thing i tell the students when we get first in the class is that all of us are different people with different abilities with different sensibilities therefore we cannot watch each other 
and try to compete with each other. Each one of us has a different strength. Like for me, expressive, expressing myself, myself verbally is a little bit uh, uh, less strong than expressing myself physically. And there are people who can express themselves verbally much better. So each one of us has different strengths. And as far as the ability of the body, the ability of the speech, of the voice, there are different abilities and different sensibilities. Therefore, what we try to do, we do the same exercise, but everybody does it according to their own ability. Right. There will be people who physically will be very good and do it easily, and other people who will find it more challenging but we look at each person as an individual. You cannot teach 18 people and have them do exactly the same thing. So what, in what way the emotional range of each person, you know, we all have the same emotional cords, right? Love, hate, passion, whatever, right? But we don't use them the same, like anger. Some societies don't let you exercise anger. And then they it, all, it all depends on the character. Some characters, express their angers very openly that, and other characters the actual, are much more the contained and they are angry and you can see through their inner lives even if they don't show it at all. But so, I also so think it's it about depends the on the character. Isn't it also about the director because the director is basically leading the boat and you know he takes them on a journey that he would like to either let them express and take from them or direct them in a way that he wants them to go the way he wants. Well, every director who's a good director, uh, by good director, I mean that he doesn't put himself above the work. Yeah has chosen the actor for the specific character. Mm -hmm. Now, if the director is not smart enough to take what the actor can the actor. offer, it means that this director is not very secure. Being uh, with the cast, working on a play, uh, I can tell you what I do. I break down the script. I uh, learn everything about it. I decide exactly what I want from each scene. I know exactly what is the, the, the function of each character in the different uh, situations. And when I get into the rehearsal, I forget about that all. And I allow the actors to do whatever they can give and I take from them. And if we fall into a place where there is a kind of a, 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 a inability to progress, then what I know about the play and what I decided that the, about the play comes to our rescue. But otherwise, every, every smart director will tell you the same thing. When you have the cast there, let them free. They are smart, they are trained, they know what the play is about, they understand themselves, take whatever you can from them. So you're on the same page by the, by the time you go on stage, you are, even to rehearsals, you're on the same page as far as what the play is about, who is the character, that's, that's, what that's you the want, why you want it. That's the table work I was talking about. So one, so That's after the table. the table work, you are actually on the same place, same page with your well, more or less, more or less, I transmit my vision. Yeah. Okay. Of the play, what I think its meaning is for me, and while we discuss it around the table, sometimes they tell me things that I agree with them, and I change. Right. At other times, they take what I say and they internalize it. And that's what we start working on. But Monty, the reason why, that, why do uh, you start with them only on the second year and not the first year in Juilliard? Uh, because I feel, I, I taught second, third, and fourth. 
And I felt that uh, it's good for them to experience something totally different uh, than what I do in the first year. And uh, the teachers in the first year know what I do and they prepare them physically because my class is extremely, extremely demanding. Right. And they prepare them for that. I don't feel like I want to waste my abilities on preparing them. I'd rather have them already working yeah. physically better yeah. so I, we can go further. You sit once a year in, with 2,000, around 2,000 new students that want to come to the school. And you come up with how many? 50? 18. 18. Wow. 18. Yeah, there are, uh, uh, different, there are different stages to the auditions. Uh, during the first auditions, from the first auditions, we call about 54 people from them. And then we have a whole weekend that we work with these 54 people to see if they can work with other people. Uh, uh, what are their abilities? Uh, how do they feel about working with the community rather than just working on themselves and so on? And we observe that. We give them actually classes if, as we give to our students. They get a series of classes. And through observing them, all of us sit in yeah. each other's class and observe all the classes. Qualities, yeah. And through observing them, we take notes. And from these 54 people, uh, we choose uh, 18 people. Would you yeah. choose it's sometimes people that you think that they have a good potential over somebody that it's obviously OK, but you're not sure they'll work well with everybody else? Definitely. Definitely. They can be the most talented people if we sense that this person uh, resists or doesn't, doesn't have the ability to be open, to take in suggestions, to be able to work with another person, no matter how we feel, how talented this person is, we prefer people who are willing really to open themselves to work with a group because that's what theater is for us, is well, working with each other. What do you take, what do you, how do you deal with their ambitions? Because they come to Juilliard or they come to Tish, we're right, you know, at NYU, they, they have ambitions like in the moon. And how do you uh, deal with somehow moderate between what they expect and, and, and then not be discouraged? Because we have many students, especially female, by the way, who come and, and because they want to direct and they lose it by the third, fourth year and they go to production or writing. And I don't know what to do about it, that they lose. I don't know even how can we um, maintain, you know, their, their need to fulfill their dreams. Well, that's very, very interesting what you are saying because I, I discovered that when I had uh, when Mina and I had our own mime school and mime theater. Mina is Moni's wife. That's correct. <laughs> and if you want, you can see her right here. She's sitting. Hey, Mina. Beside... Hi, Mina. Papin. Papin. Here she Hi, is. Hi, bye. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi. 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 Wonderful. So when we had our theater, I discovered that people come with great enthusiasm, as you are saying, they have ambition, they have enthusiasm, they really want to work. And when they start to uh, work with the discipline, which means having to go through the same, because if, you cannot grow if you don't repeat yeah. the exercises. You the, cannot grow if you don't repeat yeah. the same thing. Because each time you do it, you find different things. You find that your ability uh, is better, that you can deal with it in a, 
much more fluent way. Uh, but I learned that after a while, they feel that the routine, you know, it's not as exciting. And so there are periods. And I wrote many years ago, many years ago, I wrote a little booklet called The Ten Periods of Learning, mm. which means all the ups and downs of, uh, of, of the student during a few years period of learning. And you can't avoid it. However, people who come to Juilliard uh, from the first day that they come in, they immediately understand that whatever they know and whatever they think they know has to be set aside because we start yes. from the very beginning, which means we strip ourselves from everything that we know in order to get this blank canvas and to start to draw on it. But first you have to bring it to a blank canvas. So that means you have to get away from your habits, from habits of work, from habits of relationship with each other. You learn to listen differently, not only to the teacher, but to your uh, uh, classmates. So it's more the first year, it's all about stripping. They have no time. That's really difficult to, journey. Yeah. That's difficult. It's, it is very difficult. Very difficult. But essential. Yeah. But essential. Yeah. Because by the time that they get to the second year, they really now can take in. And they really now can experience. So it's a, it's a very thoughtful journey that was designed by a great, great, great master uh, whose name was Michel Sandny, who oh. created the Old Vic and uh, was the director at the Old Vic, directed Olivier, directed Gilgud. And uh, it was very lucky that they asked him to join uh, John Hausman at the time mm -hmm. and uh, brought him in. So he created basically the, the kind of journey that the actor has to take. And what is the principle? So what is what he was talking about? I mean, what was his uh, philosophy or method? Because or... We, do, we do know that there are different methods, right? Stanislavski and Adler and is one of them. so he was different. He was different. Uh, you cannot you see you say Adler and Stanislav Stanislav Adler is Stanislavski because she studied with him and so did uh, uh, Lee Strasberg. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the drama teacher. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, he created a method that would suit the growth of an actor. Not necessarily a specific method, but a kind of a method that would really uh, uh, zero in on each individual. So the approach, you cannot say this is the approach of Michel saint -Ny. No, he created a system in which every individual can get to do his or her best. Okay. And I cannot tell you in an hour or 10 hours. No, 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 but the I, entire... I connect it. I connect it to everything you said until now. It, we can connect to what you just said, to everything that you were leading us up to right. now. Yeah. Uh, so what made you go and study pantomime? Oh, oh. Do you remember? If, if oh, an, I was a very young uh, actor at the time here in, Jeru in Jerusalem. And uh, there was a theater that was called Masach Theater. It was an incredible theater at the time. And actually, it, the, the Camry wanted to, uh, to have them, to have the entire company come and join. And the Habima wanted it, and the director who came from the old Vic, actually, his name was Arya Shuv Olsvanger, 
uh, absolutely refused. And when they wanted to give him money, he said, no, I want it to remain an amateur theater. Because when we are an amateur theater, we do it. Oops. Okay, you're frozen. But that's okay. I said before that we are not a television show. Not only that, uh, Moni is a great mime uh, yeah. character. So maybe now he's mm -hmm. trying something. And <laughs> I did a part and the, the part was very nice. And then another part and then I got the lead parts. And uh, since I was interested in theater, I was told that there was a show at the Edison Theater in yeah, Jerusalem. Yeah, Jerusalem. Uh, with the, I was 16 at the time with wow. uh, a guy that was named Shaike Ophir. Ah. Shaike Ophir was a huge yeah. mime uh, actor in yeah. Israel. Yeah. And I went to see him and it totally blew my mind. Totally. I couldn't sleep for nights after that. Wow. And that's when I, where I knew that's what I wanted to learn. That's really lucky. I mean, this is what we all need, somebody to inspire us. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, Jaike was a great, great inspiration. I mean, my entire life, I admired him for that. So you got, he guided you or you... Not at all. I, I never met him here in Israel. Wow. But I had uh, a friend because I was very young. There was a rival theater in Jerusalem that was called the uh, Teatron Orot. Right. And uh, a, an older actor there who thought that I was exceptional, if I may say so. Yes, yes, yes. He uh, said it, not you. <laughs> took me under his wings. And uh, every Friday night, I, he used to come every Friday afternoon to come to my place. My mother would prepare food for us. And after that, I went to his place, which was a tiny room like that. And he talked to me about art. He was also a painter. He studied in Bezalel. Yeah. So he was artistically very developed. And for me, all of that was like a world that opened for me. And he was uh, in France before. And uh, he said, because I had, of course, to serve in the military service mm -hmm. a few years later. And he said, when you finish your military service, I'll go to France, get us a place, and then you come and we'll go and study together, not with Shaike, but with his teacher. Wow. wow. Which was Marcel Marceau? And, no, Etienne oh. de Cruz who was the teacher of Marcel Marceau as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's exactly what we did. You know, we you had it. such a great wings everywhere because he took you to Paris. Then Stella Adler took you to New York. That's it's correct. It's an amazing, it's an amazing way that's of correct. entering every world to the, to the top in the most padded, uh, with full of vitamins road. It's really nice. Well, you know, I, I didn't, uh, I mean, this, uh, to go to France is this guy uh, uh, actually was the person who suggested it. But after that, I, as it's not in my nature to plan things. Right. I knew I wanted things. I didn't know how to plan for them. But it so happened that, uh, I performed in France and Mina at the time wanted, to, actually she knew of Stella Adler and she told me we became very close, Mina and I, when we met at Marceau's theater, at Marceau's school, because I studied in three different schools when I was in uh, Paris. I studied with Etienne de Croo and with Marcel Marceau, who was his student, but he was a performer. And at the TNP, where we studied uh, the French classics. And I knew very well French because that's my mother's tongue, actually. My mother spoke with us in French. Money is Syrian. Ah, you can't from uh, Syria, right? My father is Syrian. My mother is Egyptian. OK. Ah. And she came from Alexandria, and she was exceptionally learned, and she spoke uh, with us only in French. 
So when I went to France, to France, I was pretty fluent. But you know, and, uh, uh, yeah. I heard that, uh, I don't know, I don't remember who told me, but somebody told me a while ago that you keep your connections with your students, former students, even if they became famous, they come to you, you know, if they have to prepare for a part. But what interests me that the way you talk, I guess that you're a good mentor. It's not enough to be a teacher. Is it true? But it's not even when they become a... No, 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 you know, I mean from the beginning. I think that's that what I say, that you are a mentor. The, I think from the way I know Moni, uh, Moni keeps himself to himself and he allows them to enjoy whatever he has to give and they keep enjoying it all the time. Yeah, but you know, but he has to 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 give, and for me, giving is, he gives is a, a lot. Is, no, it is a it is a kind of mentoring. Yeah, I think it. I don't know. So what do you expect me to say? Okay, <laughs> the important. You know what? You know what? Yes, I mentor them, and yes, I help them, and yes, I enjoy it tremendously. So and take I, us not only with the people that you might know because you know their names. On the many screen. others, yeah. I enjoy a lot working with people that have small parts and uh, find themselves really fulfilled after we work together. You don't hear about them, but they have a very rich life in art. And I enjoy that, not less. So Monile, take us hand by hand. Uh, let's follow one of your uh, graduates. They finish school. They appear in one of the plays in Off Broadway or Broadway, and you go to see them. And you go to see all of them. So take us with you and tell, tell us how do you feel? What do you do? How do you take it? How do they take it? Uh... I'm sure that as individuals, each of them takes it a little bit differently. Um, I think that they enjoy the fact that I go to see them. Uh, I enjoy tremendously seeing them using the work that we did in a very fruitful way. Uh, it's a, there is a lot, a lot I would say because I know how hard it is to act well. And when I say to act well, it's really to serve the play uh, yeah. the way it ought to be served. Yes. I know how hard it is. And I have tremendous, tremendous respect for, for these actors who, who really set aside all their needs of the time. Oh my God. This is a siren. Yeah. Yeah. You have I, to think, the staircase. I think we need to go to the. So we'll stop Thank you so and we'll much. continue when you get back. Thank you. Okay. So I'm leaving it like that. Yeah. Hi, Moni. Hi, Hi Moni. Moni. We had to stop. This, this show is basically taped twice because we had to stop last time because of the sirens on Tel Aviv and Moni had to go to the, to the shelter. Right. And so we take it from here, you know, it's a little bit surrealistic that in the middle of the whole thing, um, there are rockets, rockets all over the Middle East and, the, and we talk about actors and Juilliard and we stop, That's wonderful. you go to the shelter. Last time we were in Sippy's house, now we're in, our, in my kitchen. Right. And I'm glad that you're back and you're here. And, and you're safe. And you're safe. Because you're in uh, an old building. I don't know if you have think, a shelter. I think we should talk very fast because we might have sirens. We might too. have. Yes, again. you already right. had. You already had today, right? Right. But yeah. you know, Moni, we if we go back time. to our thing, like in between, so we can try to keep something sane in the mm -hmm. whole crazy situation. It really touched me and it stayed with me the way you protected all the 
non-famous actors and the graduates. And it was so beautiful because it's not that we care only for the famous one, but it's beautiful how you're not decorate yourself with the famous one and you appreciate so much and you love so much. Uh, and that's why when I say that each student has a chip of money's chip, this is it because you have the same chip for everybody. It doesn't matter how far they climb or they, they get. And it doesn't mean that they're less good or less successful. They're just not as famous as others. But you know, Chile, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, but you yeah. know what I think? I, I, it's not true always, but I do believe that in order to be an artist or a teacher, you have to have human compassion for everybody. I mean, it's yeah, almost a condition. Yeah, yeah, but we it's are- not, It's not only a matter of compassion. It's a really respect for yes. these people who made for themselves lives that we don't hear about, right. we don't know about, and yet their lives are quite rich and beautiful. Right. Yes. yes. I wanted to ask you, Moni, because you know the Israeli theater well, what is the major difference in training when you train in Israel and when you train in New York? Uh, I would say that Israel is blessed with incredible talents, incredible, instinctive talents. It's right. uh, there is something in the DNA that is pretty wonderful. As far as training, I would say it's pretty weak. Week, right. Because uh, the whole state of, of performing here is so different than in the United States. I think it's the level of professionalism. Yeah, but wait, but in what it's way very, is it different? It's very difficult to maintain a high level when you go every day to a different city, to a smaller, larger ones, right. you travel with the- Well, group. we need to explain to viewers that in Israel, you don't have one, a, a cast that is sitting in Tel Aviv and, and another cast that is uh, touring like the country. Like the same cast is running around uh, and once, okay. um, you know, and once other theaters are buying the show, we travel every night someplace else in Israel and it's, uh, it, it's sometimes exhausting. Yeah. Yes. It's exhausting and different uh, type of audiences. Yep. Uh, sometimes people who go less to the theater than others in the big city. Yeah, in Tel Aviv. Uh, so, but I have to protect the Israeli audience because the Israeli audience is very, very theater lover, a uh, lover. And I remember from the days that I used to travel with the theater every night, they were waiting and they were excited. Yeah. And they always, we traveled a lot because there's a need and they want you to come. And they don't right. need to come to Tel Aviv because Tel Aviv goes to them. And uh, it, it was, it's really beautiful. It's yeah, beautiful. It, it's, it's, it's uh, what you are saying is so true. I would say that per capita, I don't think that there is anywhere in the world where there are so many theater goers right. as in Israel. Right. Can I play the devil? Uh, playing the devil. The devil, no, but the devil, devil. advocate, maybe. Advocate. Okay, yes. Okay. You know that, uh, you know, my feeling is, correct me if I'm wrong, that we didn't grow up as a society that have what we call subtext. We behave, you know, we. What we have, it's outside. We don't have many subtexts in our behavior, in our relationships, in our communication. And when you're an actor or, you know, text, dramatic text always is rich with subtext and, you know, and layers. And I don't know if this has an effect. Or I'm not sure I'm asking you, I'm not saying yet because I'm, it's a thought. I don't think I no, no, no. I think what you are saying is very, very perceptive. Right. Because I think that the Israelis don't tend to deal with the subtext. Right. Uh, they tend to show more. Yes. Whatever goes on within them without holding in. Yes. Uh, and and uh, living through the inner life. So there is much more uh, 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 external kind of acting. So that's a really the end of the director. It's a little bit more external. It's a little bit more aggressive. It's a bit uh, more loud. It's a little bit less refined. Uh, but all in all, the 
talents, you know, cover for right. a lot of flaws. But I think, you know, there are so many ingredients to this because first of all, the Israeli theater is based on the European theater and you have the whole social system that was very supportive of the arts and they give time and the length of rehearsals is much different than when you come to New York and everything is down to money and you have mm -hmm. different rules and the union and, you know, the whole other story. And so they, they it, and most theaters, they have their shops in the theater. So you build the costumes next to the rehearsal room. So the, the dialogue and the, um, the, the dynamo of the whole work, and it's so organic and it's so um, fresh, you know, all the time. And Israelis don't keep anything inside. They just say out loud what they have to say. And, and it, it comes out very different. And I think that the whole, way of coming into this is very different from and when i say less professional it's not that they're not professionals but here professionalism is is kept in a very very systematic different way the rules the stage manager gives rules that nobody would cross in israel everybody crosses everybody you know and even the stage manager not always is cross is watching everything and mm. it's okay they take it the audience is like this the actors are like this it's very different attitude and it's very different uh, sum of audience because no matter how successful you are, Israel is small, so yeah. it's gone. Yeah. And then you have, and you work on many more plays or many more shows. Here you can be number one uh, on one play and the following week you have no job. And it's like, the, it, and in Israel, they think that everybody that is on Broadway is the king of the world. It's so different. And I remember when I first came here and I started to do costumes here, I tried to bring the best thing from Tel Aviv to New York. The best thing from Tel Aviv, from New York to Tel Aviv didn't work. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. You couldn't mix one and the other. So, yeah. so following this, just to ask you, uh, so do you know that in Israel and in, um, in the movies and in the theater, the actors can change the text. Not because for some reason it doesn't sit in their mouth, that's because it's why not? You know, in the, especially, I, 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 I don't know, it's, it's not here, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I really I'm telling don't. you that in, in, in films they are. And the movie scene here is totally obscure for me. I really don't know anything. In the theater? The theater I know a little bit more because I have friends who are in the theater and I go to the theater. So I have a little bit more of a notion of what's going on here. So you think, but yeah, but anyway, but I have another question also. Do you think the theater in Israel, because there is in a way high level of anxiety every whatever so often we have a conflict and we have in like, almost an ongoing conflict. What, what role the theater should, you think should play? What, what? Role, I mean, role. What is it, what they should fulfill? They should be escapist, the theater. Uh, that's what they are talking about. Oh. Actually now after oh. the Corona, that's very much what the theater directors are saying, that people are not interested in serious plays they want to have comedies and they want to go to the theater in order to have a little bit more to relax fun yeah. from the states that they were in for such a long time. That's what uh, the, the directors are saying. I read it just the other day, actually. I don't know that I agree with it. But That's what the, I want to ask. What do you think about it, that the theater will follow the request and the, what, what please the audience, well, or it should be a leader. No, I did not go into the theater to please anyone. I went because I had a certain need, and I lived through that through my theatrical life because of that need, and I still have that need. If the bar is lowered, I'd rather not be a part of it, and uh, and that's how I feel. I believe, you know, you know, Moni, I believe that here in New York, they'll start to sell tickets and they'll see what goes and how mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. would react. Because eventually, 
I mean, even if you want just to enjoy and have a good time for how long, if you really like, th love theater, or you want to have a good play, it's not always fun, you know? It's not always a... New York has a, a varied kind of venues. There is Broadway is the venue for the tourists. Otherwise, they cannot survive. Survive, right. So they have to do these big shows, these musicals, and so on. But there are many other venues off-Broadway where they maintain a very high artistic... Uh, Level. The bar is really high. And uh, so you have everything for everybody. Right. You know. Here in Israel, it's different. You don't have that. You have a little bit uh, of fringe theater, but it's really, really almost nonsensical. But, but you know, but the, another difference is that if we look, I don't know about the theater, you know better than me, but in films, for example, it, they, they take time to reflect. Like Vietnam, the first film was 10 years after Vietnam. Here in Israel, we have so many events happening fast that we don't have time to reflect. And the question, even for the actor, you know, who is in the middle, let's say the actors are now went to the shelter like you, you know what I mean? They live the life that the audience live and the tension and the anxiety. And I don't know how much it's influence. I'm sure it influences. We have no doubt that it does yeah. influence, you know, it does influence the mentality. It's very hard when you live like that to think only about art and right. about creating beautiful and meaningful art. It's difficult because there is this inner frustration, you know, that you go out in the street and you see the misery, you see what happens, and then you want to... So it is... Uh, that's why I guess that the theater directors, artistic directors, decided on to do some escapist work right now. Right, but you know, I think that all, all venues of art in Israel, in Israel, the, the rhythm of life is very fast and very dramatic and very extreme all the time. And people jump from thing to thing very quickly. They, nobody can stick to the same thing quickly. And you can see it with the, um, every venue of art, not only the theater. The art well, is doing, the I art in Israel is very up to date and edgy yeah. all the time. But, but you know, you say edgy, but, but you know, I'm sure that uh, it's almost the opposite of what does it mean to be an actor who needs to listen, who needs to dive into other people's characters, you know, into their life. There's some kind of different a temperament maybe for an actor that's being in Israel, it's not easy to take your time. I, I, don't think, I, I think it's a, a, a generic mentality. I don't think it's only the actor. I think it's the Israeli society. Yes. And I will tell you why I did direct here uh, years ago, uh, the Jacques Brel show in, uh, for Ayanka a Leagmon, uh, theater at the time. And He's a very famous theater producer who passed away. I will tell you a little story. The guy that took the, the stubs, yeah, a cartesina. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the stubs of the ticket. In the, had a suggestion for me. How, what to do in one of the songs. And I was very polite with him. And I said, I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. And after like a few days, he came and said, I did not see you change it the way I <laughs> And I said, no, I think this way I like it better. You know that the next day when I came, he said, you have to go through the back door. I will not let you in. <laughs> wow. He was offended. But this is Israel, you know, I... With him. They have a chutzpah. It's a chutzpah. No, no, it's no. Not a chutzpah. They all feel that the theater is theirs and everybody is a part of the productions. And when a production comes out, everybody has their opinion and they feel like that. that it's... 
I'm, it's not a question of agreeing or not. Okay. It's just a question of being, part, this is part of the culture. It's yeah. also lack of respect. How can I tell you? Yeah. Well, Israel don't have respect. It's not something that you can find yeah. here. Right. <laughs> Anywhere. Yeah, right. But, but when it, I think it's really, I mean, I, I don't feel comfortable. You know, when I meet with, with actors, you know, even table reading and they start to change the text and you know I don't I don't let I don't allow it. Well, unless, no one unless I feel that the line doesn't sit well with them. That's something mm. else. I'll give you an example. Once I did costumes in the comedy <coughs> theater of Tel Aviv and then I left, I went back to New York and after the premiere and then I came back and then I see that one of the actresses it was wearing a different top. And I said, what happened? And I asked the stage manager, what happened? He said, well, it's after the premiere. I said, what are you kidding me? What do you mean it's after the premiere? <laughs> and then another show that I did came to the BAM in New York. And I see that the one of the actresses is wearing a little bit different dress, not 100% the same. So I go backstage and I said, what happened? Well, we prepared the dress for the trip. <laughs> it was. But this is yeah. this is the and they don't mean bad, but that's the way they think. It's, it's and you have like, to work with it. So really are you teaching? Are you teaching relationship of actor? You no, know, are you talking to your students about the relationship of actor and and director, for example? Always. You see. Yeah. So what's what the basis of what you're teaching? I'm saying that teaching acting part of it is teaching the actor how to listen to the stage manager, how to come on time for rehearsals, how to respect the room, not to bring food into the room or drinks into the room. And <laughs> without even having to say it, how to listen to the director. So this goes without saying, however, this society here, you know, when I come to Israel to watch theater, I have a key which I stick into my brain and I turn it. Well, yeah. Let's say, now I'm in Israel, don't expect it to be what you know it ought to be. It's a different society, it's a different kind of behavior, and the art here reflects it. Can you still adjust to it? I can. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Why not? And I can yeah. even enjoy it. And I see very good things here. Yeah. I, I admire the talent here. Incredible talents. Here and there, I say, all over the place. I say here and there, if they give me five minutes with this actor, I could make him so much better. Oh, wow. But I hope they will. That, that was my next question. With the bus to... Uh, uh, Kiryat Shmone, and he doesn't need my suggestions because they like it like that there. Right. You know, it's a and different type. No, of but it is. I think that changing it, it's it's extremely hard because it doesn't sit well uh, with the whole the whole language that they use. You know, body language, uh, mind language. Uh, text attitude no they have to maintain their way and work with them their way in the best way you can and um, but the point is and that some is great and some is not but the point is that when you direct it's you're supposed to get the best out of everybody yeah. to some kind of vision one vision you cannot have everybody has its own vision and it's taking the you know the right. boat navigating it in different direction but this is something i guess it's hard to to get you know this concept are you going to direct in israel you think it's not hard because that's how it is here and everybody knows it and everybody is in it and nobody expects to uh, people to behave differently because that's how they behave here right which is fine for this society it's a different kind of life. You cannot impose a different artistic vision into a society that, that cannot contain it. You know, it's very different when you go to, especially let's say many years ago, when you had 
so many Israelis coming from different countries. So you had one cast on the stage when you have Romanian, Syrian, Polish, American, you had each actor is coming from another training system, another culture, another uh, mm. way of caring right. things, and they have to do a play together. And then you have to, and the audience is the same. You have Russians, you have um, Ethiopians, uh, Ethiopia, you have Europeans. so many from so many countries, from so many cultures. It's really not you can you don't have it here in the United States. You don't have States. diversity. You don't, here. Have, you don't have diversity. It's not inclusive. Yeah. You know. So here you go. You have more or less the same, right? The same type of act, uh, the same if background. You, if you think about the commercial theater, yes, right. Actually, it is. Uh, I think uh, diverse. It has a lot of variety of people that go there. Right. Know, no, I mean the actors. There are, there are different type of actors, you know. From, from different cultures? Latinos, and you have Blacks, and you have uh, Wasps, and you have all kinds, you know. It's just that uh, artistic, the, the society itself is different. It's not as aggressive as it is here. And there is more the culture of listening, which you don't have here because right. here it's mainly telling rather than listening, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to accept that if you live here, otherwise I'll go crazy being here. In Israel, yeah. you don't have a space between the audience and the stage. It's like this. Okay. And in New York, you have a space, this is there, this is here, there's, you know, there yeah, are But you know, Tzili, there were so many who tried to break this ritual. It would not be you the can. stage, the you audience, can. you know. If, but this in New York is also, they used to, to have the people on the stage and, and no, I'm not circles. talking about. I'm not talking about the staging. I'm oh, talking okay, about okay. yes. Here in it the goes yeah. there. Right. You are on the stage. Yes. The stage is with you. Yeah. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody goes to everybody. It's very different. It's very different. Listen, Moni, you look to me like you have tons of energy and ideas and inspiration. You see yourself directing in Israel? I am not too eager. Oh, you I'm surprised me. Uh, first of all, he spoiled. There are a lot of difficulties. I mean, theaters are going through a lot of difficulties. Right. That I don't want even to approach. Right. Um, I did speak like with some of them with that both of you know, like with Noam and Moshe Captain from the Abima and uh, the National uh, Theatre. from- uh, All the leading characters uh, in, in the theaters of Israel. Yes. I'll turn it to so, I found mine. I don't no, know no, no, it's mine. I know, I know. I don't, know, I don't know, even know where is mine. So, so after talking to them, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm after talking to them, after talking to them, to those people from the Israeli theater, uh, they are going through such a difficult time, right? You know very difficult time and if i come in it will be on my own terms as as an artist and that's uh not i'm not sure that they can accept that right you know i did speak with some of them you know even last week we talked and we talked even about uh, me creating some kind of a uh, uh, a course you know, and they keep telling me, why don't we, you start with a short sadhana? I said, no, no, no. With a what? With a short workshop. Oh, yeah. workshop. And I, uh, I don't believe in that. I don't think this will lead anywhere. I know it's very popular in Israel. But this is also, by the way, this is an example. You come with a profound program and they just want a part of it yeah. quickly and on the spot. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We have three months, three months workshops for people who just want to write a play and they are beginners, yeah. you know? What can you do yeah. in three months? 
Yeah. So if you don't have any background and if you don't have any continuation. But I, I have no doubt that since you're staying in Israel, that eventually they won't let you sit I think quietly so because you're too precious and they, they need it. They really need it. And they know well, your they work. Don't, they don't seem to need it right now. <laughs> well, right now they all recover from the Corona and the theaters yeah. really, they... And you know, of course, that the Habima went bankrupt. Yes, yes, they have a big and economic problem. Yeah. problem. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. But, but it will take yeah. some time. But it's really, you know, it's so I don't know what to tell you. We, what Do you I miss New York? Do I miss? Not at all. Honestly, but we miss you. <laughs> honestly, I miss my friends. I miss my sons. Uh, but New York as such, I don't. And I don't even miss Juilliard. I miss the Juilliard that I was in, right. but not the Juilliard that is happening now. Oh, right. really? There is a change right. also there? Everywhere. Yeah. 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 There okay. is a quiet revolution. In what sense? I think it's about time that it happens. However, I'm very happy that I don't need to deal with to it. Be, to adjust, yeah. We do, do we have time briefly to ask what the revolution or we don't? If he wants to share with us. You want to you share, share with, with us, us the briefly revolution? the revolution? There is, there is a very, very uh, needed kind of change and it is happening. But you know, like every revolution, uh, a lot of innocent heads fall before yeah. the dust settles. Yes. And the same thing is happening now. And I think that everything that myself and my colleagues at Juilliard were aiming for and tried to create and build and so on is changing drastically. Before it settles down, before it becomes what it ought to be, it's going to go through an upheaval right. that is not to my taste or to my liking. Yeah. So I'm very happy uh, not to be a part of it. Monile, we love you. But wait a minute, we, we, didn't, have, we didn't have a siren, yay! Yeah, yet. Yeah. We're and, not disturbed. Uh, we'll see you in Tel Aviv. Stay I'm sure safe. we hope so as soon as we can, so we can wait. Right. I'm coming in two weeks. Yep, stay safe. Thank Big hug to Mina. And thank you for coming and thank you for everything who came. We have to thank everybody who came to Tuzan. And see you next week. Next week. Bye, See you, Moni. It was wonderful to talk to you. Great. Bye. Thank you so much.